Hi friends, it's time in our journey together to walk through one of the most popular reels of all time, Drowsy Maggie. But there's nothing drowsy about this tune. Don't feel bad if you are not familiar with this tune. It's perfectly fine. We are learning. But I feel like learning Drowsy Maggie is kind of a rite of passage for us. So we need to do it. But also there are many aspects of playing this tune that will help develop and improve our skills as whistle players. Now, if you already know the tune Drowsy Maggie and you feel like you can play it reasonably well, please don't leave us because I need you. We need you. In the comments of this video, after you go through it, give us tips and tricks that you've used and you know about how to learn and to play this tune better. You all know I enjoy telling the story behind a lot of these tunes that we're learning. And there's really not a whole lot to tell about the tune Drowsy Maggie. I don't think that's because there's not a story. It's just we don't really know it. It's so popular. It's been around since the middle of the 19th century and everybody plays it. So I guess we need to just learn it. I will in my show notes share a link to the music and tabs. As I've been saying some and I'm going to say more and more, use the music if you read music. Uh, use the tabs if you're a tab reader to learn this tune, please don't use the music as a crutch. Um, I grew up with that, and I will talk more about that another time, but use the music as a learning tool because we want our memory to be the key to playing this tune and not the written music. But I'll share the link for you so that you can have it. Um, the reel is played so very quickly in most uh, settings. And if you're ever in a session, um, take your whistle along and sit there fingering it while they're playing. And uh, you know, I was reading different people's comments on the tune and some people said, this reel is so fast. I skip some of the notes because it's just that rapid. My goal, and I hope yours, is to learn to play this reel without having to skip all the notes, develop finger muscle memory. But we get there, remember, by learning to play it slowly, getting the sequences down, getting our fingers to work, play it well, then we can begin playing it faster. As you sense that you're ready to add an ornament, throw, it, throw one in. So our goal, as we're doing this, find a sticky passage, Play that sticky passage again and again until your fingers start getting it. And this tune starts off with some sticky passage. So we're going to go through Drowsy Maggie. I'll take you through phrase by phrase and I'll stand. Sorry, I'm going to cut my head off, but I want you to see my hands. And, and I'll talk us through phrase by phrase as we learn the tune Drowsy Maggie. And I'll, I'll mention some of the places that I think would be fun to uh, add an ornament or two. So let's jump in. Drowsy Maggie. So the tune Drowsy Maggie follows a fairly traditional real pattern. The first line is repeated um, as is. You will hear different versions and there are a number of versions of this tune. You will hear different versions. Well, that might change, but I'm using one of the more um, common traditional versions to share with us. And then the, uh, after you repeat that first line twice, you go to the third line and the fourth line is very similar, but halfway through the fourth line, it starts stepping down toward the end. I hope you're noticing a common theme that we start repeating through a lot of these, a lot of these tunes because these are passed on by sitting and playing with people. And so you're going to get a lot of consistency as to how these tunes flow. 
So Drowsy Maggie opens. I'm on a D whistle, and so I found um, a version of the most popular uh, setting of this tune in the key of D, and that's the one I'm going to share with you. And so I'm starting off with five holes covered. That's an E. And the tune starts off. So, playing that again, that is a phrase. To learn this phrase, I have done, I've played it just a number of times in sequence. Notice I am not trying to race. I'm trying to embed this tune in my brain and fingers. One of the tricks I've seen is, notice when I play this, if you follow all the, the whole patterns, if you're a purist, forgive me, notice the E, the B, one hole covered. Watch how I'm playing it this time. It's a lightly muffled, but the tune goes so fast, you can actually play it with um, the F sharp and the E finger covered there. It's a cheating, yes, I know, but it will help you, but don't make that a habit, just on this opening section uh, to learn it. Or you could. See, that might be an easier way for you don't get frustrated as you're doing this, um, but see if you could play it without the cheat first. So then we're gonna pick up, I'm gonna play those two measures again and then go to the last two measures of the first line. Okay, so those last two measures again. But if you were practicing those first two measures and then you were going to that, that held note there at the start of the second measure, it might throw you off to just keep running with eighth notes on uh, the fourth measure, but that's okay. So the first line, complete. If you want to start throwing some ornaments in, any note that's held, you can cut or tap. And then sometimes I want to put like a little, um, uh, old days I'd call it a trill, maybe a roll. But do what you feel um, is going to be good for you there. Experiment with some of that. Use traditional um, ornaments. So that's the first line. It's played twice. Then the third line starts off with a D second octave. And then again sorry okay and that's the third line the fourth line is going to sound very similar
So if they're on that fourth line, the first two measures are the same, and then it walks back into that. So it's... Um, and then instead of stopping on the D again, it goes right back to that A. And then it walks into the end, similar to the other line, except it steps down. But when you hear, when you hear Drowsy Maggie played uh, completely, they're probably going to play it three or four times. I'd like to run through the entire tune slowly once for you. Play along with me, please. I hope that helps you out as we do a little play along with Scott. So, Drowsy Maggie, try it out for yourselves. Please don't get frustrated with the pace. Go at the place where you can play well, as I like to say, play as you, as you can, not as you can't. Nail the tune, play it at a pace you can play it well. Work on those sticky passages and then start playing it a little faster, throwing in some ornaments. Pretty soon, you're gonna be racing along too. Until next time, this is Scott Shade. Happy, low D whistling. <laughs>